Hi, welcome to DrSecrets.com. I'm DR, and today we're going to talk about osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis basically means wear and tear of the joint. But one of the first things you need to find out when you're talking to your doctor is what type of arthritis you actually have. Because uh, there's other types of arthritis. Osteoarthritis is not the only game in town. For example, you could have rheumatoid arthritis, you could have gouty arthritis, crystal arthritis, and there's many other types. <clears throat> so one of the things that is useful is to find out from your doctor, is it osteoarthritis you're talking about or what type of arthritis do I have? Now, to understand arthritis, uh, let's draw a little diagram here. If you imagine a chicken bone or like a wishbone type thing. So that's our two ends of a joint. And then there's a little capsule around the joint. And it's, it's really just like a CV joint in a car. The, the capsule holds the grease in. The grease in this case is uh, called synovial fluid, which is secreted by the lining of the um, joint. And <clears throat> then also if you look on the chicken bone, you notice that there's a, a white cartilage area. And then if you bite that off, underneath there's bone. So what happens in osteoarthritis is this cartilage stuff, that white stuff around the, the ends of the bone, if you touch it, you'll notice it's kind of gristly, smooth, soft, and it slips easy. And that's exactly what your bones use as well, allowing them to slip against each other um, without friction or with as minimum friction as possible. What happens is arth osteoarthritis is gradually over time through wear and tear, that cartilage gets thinned. And eventually, if it thins enough, and the body can't repair it as fast as it's damaged, the cartilage actually wears down to the point where it's no longer present. And when that happens, then what you get is the bone actually starts rubbing against the other bone. And that causes damage, because the bones are very hard, um, they cause a lot of friction, and that rubbing causes inflammation. The inflammation then further uh, degrades the bone. So what that causes is instead of the bone to be nice and smooth when it's um, going through its, its axis of, of action, is the bone becomes very rough and irregular. And that's what causes a lot of the pain uh, when you use a joint that has arthritis in it. So a couple of things that would uh, promote arthritis, there's genetics, some people just tend to be unlucky in that respect. Or as they age and their hormone levels change, it changes the consistency of the synovial fluid also setting them up for developing arthritis. Um, also, over time, if the bones thin, that also predisposes them to forming arthritis in, in weak spots. And then the other thing is um, being overweight or repetitive use. So someone who's overweight, for example, their knees, every time they walk, they're, they're taking shocks through the knee joint, and that eventually wears the cartilage down and then causes arthritis. So knees are one of the most common spots for osteoarthritis. Uh, Another common place would be your fingers, and that's not so much because of weight, but because of repetitive use. So the constant use of the joint eventually wears the cartilage down. And that, in a nutshell, is uh, the formation of osteoarthritis. It's pretty simple once, once you get the, uh, the hang of it. In terms of treating the osteoarthritis, there's several different uh, methods. If the damage is very early on, and you just have some wear and tear of the cartilage, but not to the point where it's down to bone, some of that um, damage can be reversible. So some products like uh, nutritional products like glucosamine and um, chondroitin uh, can be taken orally by mouth in tablet form daily. And uh, what that helps to do is basically provide your body with the building blocks either to reconstitute the damaged cartilage or uh, to improve the synovial fluid, the, the sticky fluid or, or viscous fluid inside the joint that helps the CV or the joint to move against, um, against friction. Once you get to the point where you're bone on bone like this, uh, this is no longer useful. Um, you're too far gone for that to be of assistance. R really and truly, there's no cartilage left here. So in cases like that, uh, there's several other approaches we can use. Obviously, if it's a, a weight-bearing joint like the knee, losing weight helps a lot because then there's less uh, shock impact with each step. Uh, other, other options are um, 
doing injections into the joint itself of something called cortisone or prednisone derivatives. They're basically uh, anti-inflammatory hormone which can be injected with a needle directly into the joint. How that works is um, it's not changing the arthritis. The arthritis is still there but a lot of the pain, stiffness and gelling and swelling of um, osteoarthritis is actually caused by the inflammatory chemicals that, that are created from the rubbing. What this does is it cancels those inflammatory chemicals. So the arthritis is still there, it just doesn't bother you. Uh, another alternative along those same lines is by taking tablets of anti-inflammatories. But rather than the hormone version, um, that wouldn't be safe to take orally. So you use what we call NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Whereas this one is a steroid hormone. Uh, not the type of bodybuilders use, another type family member. So the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories are, are things like your aspirin and um, ibuprofen, indomethacin, and there's a whole bunch of other ones. Brand names would be stuff like um, Advil. And another alternative to the anti-inflammatory, the anti-inflammatory actually does help uh, reduce some of the, the damage occurring from the inflammatory um, uh, process. But another way of masking the pain is by using acetaminophen, which is very gentle on the, on the body in, um, in small to moderate doses. So acetaminophen is also equal to Tylenol. So that's not really helping the joint um, in terms of stopping progression of the damage. What it does do is just reduce your sensation of, of the irritation. So generally, if, you're, if your stomach and body can, can handle it, the NSAIDs would be superior over the acetaminophen, except for safety, because with the NSAIDs you also get other problems like heartburn, bleeding, etc. And um, in cases where an NSAID can't be used, and acetaminophen simply isn't strong enough to reduce the soreness, then we sometimes use mild opiates, so stuff like codeine. Another approach. Um, not used that often, but if none of these other um, methods are, are options, you can also do an injection into the joint, but instead of cortisone, use um, something called hyaluronic acid. Basically, or, or um, proteoglycans, basically what you're doing with this is using an artificial version of the synovial fluid that washes around inside here making the joint slippery and you're just putting that into a needle and inserting it back into the joint hopefully m reducing the amount of friction inside the joint and uh, a final option is um, the the pain that you sense from osteoarthritis is conducted to the brain using nerves so one other option is trying to deaden the nerves or numb the nerves to some degree and you can use something like, uh, for example, gabapentin or carbamazepine. And there's several others. What they're doing is basically trying to reduce the volume on, on, the, on the pain nerve. So the, the impulse of pain from the inflammation is still coming, but you just dampen some of it so you're not aware of as much discomfort. And the very final solution, if the arthritis gets really severe and the bone is just totally rubbing against each other, the joint is practically rendered useless, is to do surgery. But that's usually left as the last resort. And with the surgery, what you're doing is typically actually replacing the bad segments of bone and putting in an artificial um, joint to do their function in that mid-range there. But that's usually left as a very final resort for um, osteoarthritis. And that's it in a nutshell. Thank you for watching and stay well.